tonight on Nebraska Nightly. The Alpha Epsilon chapter of Theta Xi is under construction and improvements are being made with green space and updates on what you might see on the May 14th ballots. This is Nebraska Nightly. Live from the Don and Lorena Meyer studio at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln College of Journalism and Mass Communications, this is Nebraska Nightly. Welcome to Nebraska Nightly. I'm Camille Andel. And I'm Priscilla Castaneda. Sports reporter Justice Rohde has our top story today. This afternoon, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln introduced Troy Dannon as their 17th athletic director. Dannon takes over from previous AD Trev Alberts, who departed two weeks ago to become athletic director at Texas A&M. Dannon spent the previous eight months in Seattle as the athletic director of the University of Washington, overseeing the Huskies' run to the CFP National Championship. Dannon brings an experienced pedigree to Lincoln, having been the AD at Northern Iowa for seven years, Tulane for eight years, and then the brief stop at Washington before coming to Lincoln. Nebraska Cornhusker Athletics will be the standard by which everyone else will measure themselves. And it doesn't matter what job we have in the department, my staff will hear me say this. It doesn't matter. If you sell tickets, you sell tickets in a way that everybody that sells tickets in the country should look and say, that's how you sell tickets. If you teach strength, then you're going to do it in such a way that everybody can say, this is how strength should be taught. University of Nebraska-Lincoln has many historic buildings, but as Nebraska Nightly's Brady Sorbin reports, there's a lot more to preserving history and honoring contemporary needs than meets the eye. The Alpha Epsilon chapter of Theta Xi took on the tough task of fixing their historic home after an unexpected ceiling collapse. The reason the roof actually caved in, or the ceiling caved in, was because the radiator pipe broke because it was too cold during the winter and just ended up bursting. So. Um, we needed to install a new radiator in that room and a whole new radiator line on like that whole floor I was affected. I did talk to the contractors and they, they did say they, they had some trouble getting to the pipes because some kind of configuration that they weren't really too familiar with. But usually you need like a special permit. But in this case, we weren't really altering anything. We were just fixing it back to what it was. So we didn't really see as much of those hiccups. The roof cost Theta Xi $2,500 in personal damages alone, but Theta Xi is sparing no expense to get things back to normal. Labor costs and material expenses totaled beyond $30,000. Honestly, it was like a tornado went through it. Every single wall, everything was just covered with insulation, like my dresser, my, the walls, my mirror, everything was just like covered. And right when it fell down, the fire alarm went off and everyone woke up in the house. And yeah, it was kind of just a crazy experience. And everything pretty much just got destroyed. You still do see some of the rust, if you will, from it being so old. And, you know, sometimes you do, you do wish it was, a lot, it was a lot newer, but for the most part, like, I guess it's a little bit of a nostalgia and you feel like you're a part like, of some, some history. The house is entering its 97th year and Polka says they desire remains a prominent fraternity on the UNL campus. Brady Sorbin, Nebraska Nightly. As spring approaches and temperatures start to rise, ice cream sales begin to increase. Construction is making it harder for a UNL staple to serve their guests this year. Construction is underway to improve the green space near the Union. The goal is to make the space more inviting and accessible to East Campus students, faculty, staff, and visitors. The UNL Dairy Store on East Campus is a popular spot to get a cold treat. The location is becoming harder to access with new construction. I have noticed some difference in traffic. Um, it's a lot harder for people to come in when there's only one door open and half the campus is closed so people have to walk all the way around. It's kind of an incentive for them to not really want to come in as much. The construction is projected to last 8 to 12 months. The store is working on solutions to bring in business this spring and want to let customers know they are still open. There are petitions in circulation for the Nebraska 2024 election. While they are not guaranteed to be on the official ballot, there is a chance they could be on the private education tax credits referendum is qualified to be on the 2024 general election ballot. Some of the petitions in circulation for the 2024 election include Nebraska Cannabis Constitutional Amendment, Consumption or Excise Taxes Constitutional Amendment, Grocery Items, Exemption Constitutional Amendment, Nebraska Human Life Protection Initiative. 
Nebraska Medical Cannabis Patient Protection Initiative, Nebraska Medical Cannabis Regulation Initiative, Paid Sick Leave Initiative, and Protect the Right to Abortion Constitutional Amendment. The primary election is May 14, 2024, while the general election is set for November 5, 2024. Nebraska Severe Weather Awareness Week is from March 25th to March 29th, and the Lincoln Electric System says it serves as an important reminder for the Lincoln community to prepare for the storms. LES suggests individuals follow these steps to help ensure they are prepared if the power goes out. Step one is to create a plan. Have a plan and verify everyone in the household knows the plan. Next, update your info with LES Powerline. LES Powerline is the outage reporting system matching your number to your service address. You'll want to build an emergency kit, food, water, and a light source, and a way to stay informed, such as a battery-operated radio or television. Next, report the outage to LES. Make sure you check your generator, help them help you in the event of an emergency. To report an outage to LES, you can go to online to les.com report or over the phone via Powerline at 888-365-2412. Going along with Severe Weather Week, Logan Schlotman is here for your forecasts with some severe weather information. Logan? Yeah, we're gonna be talking about what a difference between a watch and a warning is. So sometimes that can get a little confusing. So we're gonna substitute severe weather with food. More importantly, tacos, my favorite food. So. For a, for a watch, we're going to be seeing that the ingredients are going to be possible. So we have the ground beef, we have the sour cream, and we have the lettuce out. So we have the ingredients to make a taco, but there has been no tacos made yet. And we can replace that back with severe weather. We have the ingredients for a tornado or severe weather, but we just haven't seen that yet. While well, compared over to a warning where we see that happening. So the tacos have been made. There are tacos imminent. Same thing with tornadoes and blizzards. It is currently happening. So that's the difference between a watch and a warning. But I'll be back with some more weather right after the break. Coming up after the break. A boat bashes into a Baltimore bridge. Abortion pills back at the Supreme Court. And the WikiLeaks founder is in making strides in his extradition case all after the break. Okay, so how about this much? I don't know. Well, how about this much? Mm, I don't know. How about... Mm, actually, I don't know. Okay, maybe this much? The very tip of your pencil, a fraction of a raindrop, three grains of salt. That's how much it takes for a dose of fentanyl to become lethal. Learn more at realdealonfentanyl.com. like winter today, but spring-like temps are coming later this week. Logan Schlotman is here with your current forecast. Logan? We're going to take a look back at the past 72 hours where we're looking at total snowfall, and a lot of that snowfall did hit central Nebraska where we had a high of 16 inches over in Arnold, Nebraska, 15.5 in Anselmo, and then all the way going until 10.3 in Burwell, Nebraska, so lots of snow has dropped over here today in the past 72 hours. But current conditions across the state, they're going to be mainly in the mid-20s in the central Nebraska. We also have an outlier of 43 degrees in Scotts Bluff, and over in the metro areas, we're going to be seeing mid-30s at 34 in Lincoln, and then 31 in Omaha, while Looking at Lincoln right now, we're still going to be seeing those north, northerly blustery winds of 21 miles per hour, bringing a wind chill all the way down to 17 degrees. While well, looking at some weather headlines for this week, for today, it's going to be the coldest day of the week, so, and it's also going to be blustery. While we look through Wednesday through Friday, we're going to be seeing rising temperatures and more calm conditions. Temperatures might get all the way up to 70 degrees. Well, for Easter weekend, it is going to be chances for precipitation and more seasonable temp temperatures, which is going to be around 60 degrees. Well, looking at the satellite and radar, we're going to be seeing clouds are still going to be making their way across Nebraska. We have some left in uh, central Nebraska and a little bit night next to the river. As we look more into Nebraska, we can still see those clouds more high definition. Some are going to be mostly cloudy over in Lincoln. While 
future cast radar, we're going to be seeing not a lot of precipitation go through the area. A lot of these are going to be maybe 5% chances. This is going to be going from uh, later tonight all the way until Thursday, so the next 60 hours. So it's going to be a relatively dry weekend. And same thing with the wind gusts. I know they have been very blustery recently, but after today where we see those strong winds dumb, we're going to be seeing a southerly wind front start make its way down, but bring more calmer wind speeds, maybe max of maybe 20 mile per hour gusts compared to 63 that we had earlier yesterday. Wow. Rain chances across the state, like I was saying, Wednesday through Friday are going to be quite dry with 0% chances. That's going to be changing as we go into Easter weekend, where we see a 20% on Saturday and Monday, and then a 30% on Sunday. So plan accordingly for some possibility of pers precipitation. Well, later conditions for tonight is going to be a low of 17 degrees, a northwesterly wind of 8 to 15 to 20 miles per hour. It's going to be mostly clear, and some gusts can get as high as 29 miles per hour. Well, tomorrow we're going to be seeing a high of 48 degrees, a southwest wind of 5 to 9 miles per hour. That's the reason why we're going to be seeing those temperatures increase. It's going to be mostly sunny, maybe a cloud here and there, and some light variable winds. Well, looking at the week ahead, like I was saying, we're going to be seeing that rising temperature trend hit all the way up till Friday, where we have a high of 68 degrees before we finally see some more seasonable temperatures, maybe around the 60s, before finally hitting another cold front on Tuesday, bringing those temperatures down to 45 degrees. I'm Logan Schlotman with the weather, and we'll take it right back to the desk. Right now, an urgent search for survivors continues after a ship hit a bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse into a river. Karen Kaifa is in Baltimore with the latest on the unfolding situation. There are a number of conversations this morning about the ripple effect of this bridge collapse on port traffic, on traffic on the roads, but Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott says the most important conversation right now should be about the victims who could still be submerged in the water and their families. He described this as an unspeakable tragedy. The search and rescue operation was able to enter a new phase as sun came up with the divers able to enter the water. Uh, we were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake. A shocking tragedy early Tuesday. A ship colliding with Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge causing it to collapse into the Patapsco River. The video showing the ship's lights flickering twice before veering off course and crashing. Everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted. Rescue operations immediately underway. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point, and we will continue to be for some time. The local community stunned by the scene. So I, I came down just to see, and I can't believe it. And then I seen a picture of it, and I was like, oh, my God, you got, you got to be kidding me. Lots of resources going into this search and rescue effort as drones are part of it. The FAA has restricted the airspace immediately over that bridge collapse site. This area is close to the Baltimore Washington International Airport, but no delays reported so far. In Baltimore, I'm Karen Kaifa. Roughly 31,000 vehicles a day use the bridge, according to the Maryland Transportation Authority. The state's transportation secretary said it's too early to tell what people can expect going forward. More than a year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the controversial issue of the abortion is once again facing the justices. The high court is set to hear oral arguments Tuesday on whether the FDA was outside its authority when it made it easier for women to get the abortion pill. Muffy Pristone a group called the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine sued the Food and Drug Administration in the case. Other doctors in anti-abortion groups have joined in. Originally, they claimed the FDA should not have approved the drug. And now their attorneys are arguing that the agency allowed women easier access to Muffy Prestone. One of the issues the justices will first determine in whether the doctors and the other groups have been harmed by the way the drug is in a way that gives them a right to sue. Some legal experts question whether the people suing the FDA have met the stand standard supporters of the abortion pill, including the American Medical Association, say the drug is extremely safe. The FDA approved the drug more than 20 years ago. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has fended off immediate extradition to the United States to face espionage charges. The High Court in London gave the U.S. government three weeks to assure them that Assange would enjoy similar legal rights as U.S. citizens. 
and that he would not face the death penalty. In the U if the U.S. fails to give those assurances, Assange would be allowed to appeal his extradition at a hearing in May. Assange has fought extradition for the last five years from London's Belmarsh prison. He is facing 18 criminal charges in the U.S. relating to WikiLeaks distribution of classified material and diplomatic cables in 2010 and 2011. For the first time in nearly 30 years, part of Donald Trump's business empire has gone public and is off to a solid start. Trump Media and Technology Group, which owns the struggling social media platform Truth Social, began its long-delayed journey as a public company at Tuesday's opening bell. Its ticker symbol is DJT, as in Donald J. Trump. The stock surged about 50% at the opening on the NASDAQ. Wall Street assigned Trump Media a value of about $14 billion. Expert warns the price tag is not in line with reality. The skyrocketing share price comes even through Trump Media and running through cash, piling up losses in its main product, Truth social and is losing ushers at Tuesday's opening price that stake was worthy nearly six billion dollars. But lockup restrictions likely prevent Trump from selling or even borrowing against those shares anytime soon. Trump media was able to go public in merging with any special purpose accusation company. Coming up after the break. Football is warming up for the spring. Husker baseball is looking for games this week. A bittersweet end to Husker basketball. The need for blood never stops. And at the Nebraska Community Blood Bank, your blood could help save lives. Right now, only 7% of the population donates blood. But imagine if there were more. We're sitting at below a seven day level of supply of all blood types across the board. So. Every blood type is important, and we need all donors of all types to come in and donate right now. At the Nebraska Community Blood Bank, they believe that all types make a strong blood supply. Welcome back to Nebraska Nightly. Justice Rohde is here with sports. Justice? Husker football emerges from their winter conditioning period this week as they get set for spring practice for the second time in the Matt Rule era. The Huskers had one goal this winter, chasing three, the same amount of points they lost four separate games by in the previous campaign. Now entering spring practice, the Huskers have a host of fresh faces with several freshmen and transfers hoping to contribute to a winning season and bounce back from the disappointment last year brought. I have to just do a lot more competition because what I want to see is a team in the fourth quarter when the game comes down with five minutes left that just makes one more play than we made last year. It's not this huge overhaul. It's just, hey, make one more play on offense, make one more play on defense. Just They love football. They love us, and we just want to win. They're, they're humble, uh, and they care about each other, and they want to be the best that they can be. Last, game, last year's spring game ended 21-7 in favor of the white team. This year's spring game is set for Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. Tickets are on sale now. For more information, visit Huskers.com. Husker baseball was planning to head to Manhattan for a midweek set against the number 23 Kansas State Wildcats, but inclement weather and frigid temperatures have halted those plans. The Huskers will now wait until Friday to play again when they head to Evanston to take on the Northwestern Wildcats for a three-game series. The Huskers look to open up Big Ten play on a positive note and start their campaign for a Big Ten title. 
Husker women's basketball fell to Oregon State in a hard fought battle Sunday afternoon in Corvallis by a score of 61 to 51. Jess Shelley was the only Husker to end up in double figures. She finished the night with 10.7 assists and six rebounds to boot while playing 38 of the 40 available minutes. You can see here Jess Shelley whips a pass to Callan Hake. She drives in, draws the contact and gets the roll. She ends up going to the line for an extra. The next, Talia Van Olhoffen starts the break for the Beavers and a couple of passes later, Dominika Parova slices through the lane for an easy layup. Huskers down early in the third quarter. Shelley Markowski working the pick and roll. A nice dump off from Shelley to get Markowski a wide open look. Couldn't miss that one. Beavers up 11 late now trying to break the press. Parova finds some space and leaves it for Tamia Gardner. It looked all too easy for the Beavers. As they run out onto the court in celebration, Oregon State moves on to the Sweet 16 in Albany to take on the number two seed, Notre Dame. What a weekend for basketball. I mean, am I right? Yeah, I agree, uh, but it sucks that women's basketball had a horrible loss. Yeah, really tough way to go out, especially after the success they saw against Texas a and Friday night, beating them 61-59, but Corvallis is a tough place to play. They wanted to build the dam, and they did just exactly that. Oregon State moves on to the next round. Yeah, for sure. Well, coming up after the break, a recap of the Oscars. Titanic memorabilia being sold and a look from the final of The Bachelor. Need for blood never stops. And at the Nebraska Community Blood Bank, your blood could help save lives. Right now, only 7% of the population donates blood. But imagine if there were more. We're sitting at below a seven day level of supply of all blood types across the board. So every blood type is important and we need all donors of all types to come in and donate right now. At the Nebraska Community Blood Bank, they believe that all types make a strong blood supply. Okay, so how about this much? I don't know. Well, how about this much? How about... Um, actually, I don't know. Okay, maybe this much? Mm, I don't know. The very tip of your pencil, a fraction of a raindrop, three grains of salt. That's how much it takes for a dose of fentanyl to become lethal. Learn more at realdealonfentanyl.com. All, all has been happening in the entertainment world. Madeline Fox is here with all the details. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito are teaming up again. The two actors played brothers in the 1988 hit Twins, and they also appeared together at the Oscars where they made a joke about playing Batman villains. DeVito said their new movie is currently being written. One of the most famous doors in cinematic history has sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Titanic door frame used to keep Kate Winslet's character Rose alive in the 1997 hit movie sold for almost $719,000. The door being sold has also opened back up the debate on if Rose and Jack could have both survived on the door frame. Now, speaking about love stories, everyone's favorite bachelor gave his final rose last night in what some may say was the most dramatic finale in bachelor history. The finale consisted of introducing both Daisy Kent and Kelsey Anderson to Joey's family, final dates, and looking at engagement rings. They also revealed the new bachelorette in the three-hour episode. That's all for entertainment this week. Back to you at the desk. Continuing our collaboration with 1011 News and UNL Communications, Peyton Poland is here with this week at UNL. Construction wraps up at one of the state's most popular museums. The University of Nebraska State Museum and Mueller Planetarium have reopened to the public. Morrill Hall has been closed since October for renovations to improve accessibility, add new exhibits, and stabilize its relative humidity and temperature. Workers are getting their ducks in a row and putting the final touches on the 97-year-old building. Everyone is so ready to welcome back um, the families, uh, the campus, our student faculty and friends, people who love the museum. It's been too quiet in the museum. Uh, we've had construction noise, but we haven't had what we consider joyful noise. The $9.3 million renovation is the largest in the museum's history. Husker students kick up their heels for Miracle Kids. 
UNL students raised nearly $84,000 at Huskerthon, an eight-hour dance marathon held on campus. The annual event celebrates children who have been treated at Children's Nebraska, a pediatric hospital in Omaha. The children are known as Miracle Kids. This year, 26 Miracle Kids and their families were guests of honor at Huskerthon. The money will be used to build out the cardiac care unit at the hospital. A new UNL scholarship aims to fill a statewide need. Applications are now open for the Nebraska Elite 11 Veterinarian Scholarship Program. Elite 11 offers financial support to Nebraska students pursuing degrees in animal science or veterinary science at UNL's College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. The livestock industry adds more than $6 billion to the state's annual economy. However, Nebraska and several other states are facing a shortage of livestock veterinarians. The Elite 11 program will remove the cost barrier for Nebraska students interested in production animal veterinary medicine. Applications are available online at casnr.unl.edu slash Elite 11. The university celebrates teen artists from across the state. UNL's Hickson Lead College of Fine and Performing Arts announces the winners of the 27th Annual Nebraska Young Artist Awards. 80 students from more than 40 Nebraska high schools will receive the awards and be invited to visit campus in April for a day of activities. The awards recognize 11th grade students for their talents in visual art, dance, music, theater, film, and emerging media arts. And that's what's happening this week at UNL. I'm Peyton Polad. Nebraska Nightly is a student production of the University of Nebraska's College of Journalism in Mass Communications. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Nebraska Nightly. Yay!